Welcome back to West Explains Best. Today we're going to be doing a CUDA worksheet software tutorial. So these are worksheets that your teachers most likely will give you at some point in class. And this particular one is on radicals and rational exponents. So we're going to go ahead and get started. So the first problem, we see 7 to the 1 half power. Now you're probably seeing that 1 half power and thinking that is super confusing. I don't know how to do this. I'll tell you it's not as complicated as it seems. So let's break it down into its components. So say we have a to the m power, and then we are taking the nth root. Well, I want to change the color of that. And then we are taking the nth root of that. Okay. First, we need to understand that this is equivalent to, whoops, make that a bigger. This is equivalent to if we take the nth root first and then raise it to the m power. Okay, these are both the same thing. So once we understand that, then we can understand that to put in exponent form, first, we already know that we can raise a to the m power. That's understood with exponents. But now we have a different component, which is if we want to express a radical with exponent, we put it in the denominator. So this is the index of a root and then the m is the power so those are two different functions going on with one rational exponent okay so if we want to go in reverse that's easy to do we just have to recognize that the top is the power and the bottom is the index of the root so index of root and i'm just writing it again just so, so it kind of uh, solidifies it for you so what we're going to do is we're going to copy the base just like we had here. We have 7. And now we're going backwards. We're going from the power, or excuse me, the exponent to the radical. So I need to put this in a radical. And now what do I put for my index? I can put 2 for my index. And then I need to raise this whole thing to the power of 1. Now you're going to notice a couple things here. One, if we raise something to the power one, it doesn't change the value at all. So we can just kind of get rid of that. And the second thing is the square root, okay, or the second root, we don't need to write the two there. There's an implied uh, two within the square root. So we can just go ahead and write this for our final answer. So these two are equal. Those are equal expressions. One is in exponent form and one is in radical form. So let's go ahead and work on number two. Again, we're just writing in radical form here. So the first thing we need to identify is we need to identify our index. The index is always the bottom of a, the fraction of the exponent. So that's the index of root. And then four is our power. Keep in mind, we have to keep the base the same. So our base is gonna be four. We're gonna have uh, a root, okay? What is the index of that root? It's gonna be three. And then we can raise this to the fourth power. Now you can put it inside the parentheses like that, or like I showed earlier, you can make parentheses, raise the whole thing to the fourth power, and then take the cube root of four on the inside. It's up to you. In order of operations, it really doesn't matter uh, because it's all exponents here. So that is, both of these are acceptable answers. I prefer this one because it looks a little bit more neat. So I think you guys should be good on all of these. Just keep in mind you need to have the bottom number become the root in each of these, and then the top number becomes the power, okay? So let's go ahead and go in reverse. So now we we're going to write each expression in exponential form. So what we need to do here is we need to identify our root and our power. So there's our index of our root. There's nothing written, so it's an implied 2. So we can go ahead and write 2 in there. And then we need to identify our power, and that is 3. Our base needs to stay the same, so let's identify our base. Our base is 10. So now we can write this as 10. And what is the power? The power is 3. And then the root has an index of 2. There's our answer. Let's do another one. Uh, let's do one without parentheses or one. There we go. Let's just go ahead and do this one. So here we see that we have an index. Our index is 6 of our root. Where's the power? So notice how there's no power here or no power like outside parentheses like in the next example. So what we're going to do is we don't even need to write the power or we can write a 1. Well, we, don't, we shouldn't write a 1 because that's the same value. So we're just not going to write a power. 
So we're going to rewrite this. Oh, exponent form, sorry. Write the 2, 1 over, let me write the 1 here, over 6. Where'd the 1 go? There it is. Okay, 1 over 6. Now, you don't want to write a 0, okay? People might fall into that trap. It's like, oh, uh, there's no exponent, so it needs to be a 0. No, anything to the 0 power is 1. So there's an implied 1. So if you don't see it, it's an implied 1, and you need to write it in a fraction. So don't be like, oh, because we don't need to write it as an exponent, we can just say 0 over 6. That's not the same thing. Okay, so don't fall into that trap, and you should be fine. Now let's go to some of these other ones. Let's do, for example, let's do number 14. Here we have 5x. Now we have two terms inside the parentheses. So we need to do apply it to both of these. And then we have the, the root here and the power is there. Now I like to apply negatives to the power. So I like to consider this as 5x. Oh, whatever, I'll keep blue. 5x. And we're going to do the second root, which we don't need to write the 2. I'm just, I'll do that in a second. And I like to put it like that, to the negative 1. I like always applying the negative to the power. So then we can rewrite this as 1 over, that's what a negative exponent does. I, I covered that in another video, 5x square root. So another way to write it, if you didn't want to put it in the negative exponent, it's just asking, and it doesn't matter if it's a negative exponent or not, is you could do like that. Okay, that's one answer. Let's go to this decimal. If you have a decimal here, it looks like it, it's tough to do, but you need to convert this to a fraction first. So think about what can give you the fraction of 1.5. Uh, so one, one thing that I know is you can double it and then express that as divide by 2. So we double 1.5 times 2, and you divide by 2, and it keeps the value. So we change it into a fraction, essentially. So the power is 1.5 times 2 is just 3. The index is going to be divide by 2. So now we have it in fraction form, rational form. Keep in mind we're applying it to both of these. So this becomes the square root. That's the 2. We don't need to write the 2 there. Okay, 6v, and then we can cube that. Let's just cube the whole thing. Then we have a couple more examples. I'm trying to think of any one or two hard. Let's do number 24. This one looks like the toughest. So 24, we have a 5 in the denominator. So let's first just uh, put this into uh, exponent form in the denominator. We have 3k. It's to the square root. So 2 is going to be in the bottom. And then we have 5 in the top. Now, if we wanted to rewrite this uh, not in a fraction form, it's see how it's over 1. Well, then that means we can write 3k. Oops, I need to put this in parentheses. Very important you put that in parentheses, otherwise the value is not the same. In parentheses to the negative 5 over 2 power. And that's how you do that one. Hope you guys found this helpful. Rational exponents can be tricky, but if you break it down into its components, it's much easier. For now, be good, be kind, be true, be nice, and be honest, and I'll see you next time.